Honorable Lindsey Grant. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, friends, supporters, well-wishers of the People's Action Movement, I want to hear you. That's all like it. Now we start the action. Well, the protocol has already been established before me, but I want to recognize all that the protocol has been established. The Prime Minister, Dr. Timothy Harris in the house. I also want to recognize our party political leader, the Honorable Sean K. Richards. I came with a message this afternoon. I came with a message this afternoon. And the message is the People's Action Movement is in good hands. The People's Action Movement is in good hands. But I want you to listen to me carefully. When I say the People's Action Movement is in good hands, I don't mean the hands of our political leader, Sean K. Richards. Of course he's a leader. But I want to say not only is it in his hands, which are good, but it is in an executive that I see has been elected, which augurs well for the People's Action Movement. I don't believe ever before in the history of this party have I seen an executive which boasts five women. Give it to the women on the executive. You see, I think I have about three minutes, but in my three minutes, I want to tell you a couple of things. Where we sit this afternoon, the labor has been the labor of the women in Pam to get us where we are this afternoon. And so we know that the labor of the women on the executive is going to give much food for the People's Action Movement. Because as we speak, the major financial contributors and raisers of money in this party is who? Yeah. The women. The majority of voters in this country are whom? Yeah. So when you have women, good things must happen. And so we have to support the women and the executive. But I believe the executive that we are seeing looks fresh. It looks good. I think we can have a lot of new ideas flowing. And so right now, I don't know when the prime minister is going to call the election. But right now, we're in election mode. We're in election mode. And while I'm on that note, I just want to say, Two things. When we came to the people in unity in 2015, we didn't just talk, we came with something. You see, when I was in law school, my professor used to say that the rules of civil procedure was the waka made them, was the Bible. Well, in politics, we only got one Bible, and it's called a manifesto. That's the Bible. Because that is the contract we came to the people with. And that is the contract we told you we will deliver in five years. And I like to walk with me manifesto. Because when you look down the manifesto, we have completed more than 60% of what we said we would do. And it just gone three years in a five year term. We told you we were going to remove vat and food. Did we do that? Yeah. We told you what else? You should know it. What else we told you? You see, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? What's that? We told the sugar workers we're going to give them what? The 16 million. Did we give them that? We told them we were going to give you $500 a month for those who less than $3,000 per month. Well, the, the Prime Minister is there. I am advised that 
that, that soon come. That is what I'm advised. But what I want to tell you is that we are making our commitments to you based on the contract. Listen to me carefully. In the contract, it did not say Joe Blow is going to get $500. It did not say Joe Blow is going to get any house. It said the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, the people, we can provide houses for you. Because some people like to talk about me and get this and me and get that. Everybody going to get. Everybody is going to get these things take time. And of course, it takes money too. But we have given you our commitment to do that. And this government has been making sure we keep our promises. Commitment made, a promise made, promise kept. Promise made, promise kept. And that is what we are going to do. And so I know time is going, but I want to direct something now. Having said that, I made some commitments to the good people of number four. I want to hear you, number four. I made some commitments to the good people of number four. And having made those commitments to the people of number four, I have to deliver. Can't go back to the money and deliver. I promised them in challenges a netball court. Mr. Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister are waiting on me netball court in challenges. I promise a new housing project in Challengers. Minister of Housing, are waiting for my housing project in Challengers. Right now, I, I got concussion with the amount of blows I'm getting down there. The Honorable Minister of Infrastructure, are he out front? Because he promised me something, and I'm not getting it soon. Our commitment, no government in this country has ever done. It's been a perennial problem in our road, with the road. And under this government, we are going to correct a problem that has been there over 30 years. I want to get the Minister of Infrastructure and Works, Patches Libor, a round of applause, because I know he can deliver for me just now. He promised me some roads also. So I'm coming to him for those. One road? He said one. <laughs> so long, so long. Well, you see, I'm glad you said one road so long. I have no problem with that. Because this government protects the money of the people. It's your money. So we have to use it wisely. Work with it little by little and build our infrastructure as we go by. But I'm telling you, there's no government ever before will deliver to you infrastructural developments of $145 million, this government. And I want to thank the minister again, Patches, because with his help, we are going to bring to you, by the end of next year, I think it is, the best cruise pier in the Caribbean. Thanks to the minister again. And I want you to understand what, why I was singling out all these ministers bit by bit as we go along. Because this government is a government of unity. Not disunity, a government of unity. This government. But every party in this unit has to pull their weight. I'm going to say it again. Every party in this unit has to pull its weight. Because a chain is as good as the weakest link. And so we cannot be complacent. We have work to do. But of late, I like to see the energy that we're having. And I want us to work that energy. 
I want us to harness that energy. I want us to pull all those energies together from now until when the Prime Minister decides to call the election. Because I want to tell you that in constituency number one, we're bringing that home. In constituency number two, John L. bringing that home. Now, all you don't tell me, don't tell me I leave you no know, things because I ain't know what's happening yet. So I'm gonna leave out some things. So what call one and two? Constituency number five goes without saying our oh, political leader, Sean K. Richards. Constituency number eight. Eugene Hamilton in the house will bring that home. And Prime Minister, how much votes you win by the last time? I can't even check now. Yet. As, as um, Patches are saying, Matsy, what? Why we? The strongest weak point. A thousand plus. I know the Prime Minister is going to double that in number seven next election. Who I leave out? Six? Well, Connor, you say you have what, 200? Eh? 200. We're not letting you back in this party here on the next convention there unless you give us a win. Patches win by four, we will take two from you. <laughs> All right, that's good, that's good. I leave out number three. I leave out number three. And the reason why I leave out number three is I'm neither the prime minister or the political leader. That too much for my pig weight. <laughs> but I know whatever comes, whoever comes in number three, unity will take number three. Well, I'm not going to talk about four. I'm not going to talk about four. The reason why I'm not going to talk about four is simply this. I want to, is that whether I can win number four or not? That's not the question. The question is how many I will win number four by. And how many I win number four by is by my delivery. Because all politics is local. And I want to tell you just about two things I've been doing. One I've introduced just lately, an after school education program. Wonderful. Wonderful. I want to single out the two teachers who run that program for me. We run it on Tuesdays and Thursdays in Challengers and in Halfway Tree. And I am advised that the program right now is up to about 75 students. Give them a round of applause for me, please. Wonderful job they're doing. And then last Wednesday, I started a program at the Tyrrell Williams Primary School called Fuel for Education, which really is they have students who come to school at mornings without breakfast. And I don't think in 2018, in a country that's endowed as ours is, that we have to have persons start in the morning, students, without food. I can recall the, the speech given at the Prime Minister's um, banquet, Dr. Redmond, was it? Dr. Redmond, who grew up poor in that region of, of, of St. Kitts. And he said he was so delighted when Dr. Simmons, our first Prime Minister, introduced the school meals program. Because he could then have gotten a most nourishing meal. And according to him, he said, that was in part the reason why he is so successful. He was able to do that. I see the chairman, chair lady, 
she is now standing near to me, which means that my time up. But I just want to end by saying, I see the differences in this convention. I see the lovely faces across the room. The house is packed. People are energized. But I want to tell you, we have to take that energy on the road from now. I want you to give yourselves a round of applause for this 53rd annual convention of the People's Action Movement. Members and friends, a pleasant good afternoon. Thank you very much.